Hi, it's Dwyer, DwyerCrime.blog, also RichardDwyer.co. Let's talk about the metallurgical evidence that might or might not link Lee Harvey Oswald's Manlicher Carcano rifle to the Kennedy assassination to CE399, the magic bullet. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, certain reviewers of the evidence, Vincent Bugliosi, for example, talks about how Oswald's Manlicher Carcano was the only rifle that could have fired the magic bullet. Right? That's the claim. The claim goes further than that. That two bullets hit the limousine. And that both of them, to the exclusion of all other firearms, came from Oswald's rifle. Right? So, the people who believe this argument want you to believe that the bullet evidence excludes the possibility of a conspiracy or of, at a minimum, more than one person shooting into the presidential motorcade. Now that's the argument. Now let me just say, that argument is false. It's disputed, at a minimum. Right? It's been repeated so often that people start to believe it, just like they believe in Santa Claus. In the comment section of this YouTube video, and my YouTube account is Esquire777, I'm going to leave a link to an article that appeared in the Journal of Forensic Science from 2006. It's authored by PhDs Eric Rundich and Patrick Grant. The article is entitled Proper Assessment of the JFK Assassination Bullet Lead Evidence from Metallurgical and Statistical Perspectives. What they do is they scrutinize carefully looking at the methodology and the conclusions of Professor Vincent Gwynn, who reanalyzed the bullet lead evidence for 1978's House Select Committee on Assassinations. And they reached conclusions Looking at the methodology, just understand, their report is in the peer-reviewed Journal of Forensic Science. This is how hardcore forensic scientists see the bullet evidence. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read from key parts to give listeners here an idea on what was being discussed, the evidence that was reviewed. You'll notice too that these text excerpts appear in the link to the PDF that can be found in the description section of this video. Let me start. The National Archives submitted 10 specimens from the JFK investigation to VPG. That's the expert that was hired by the House Select Assassinations Committee. Only seven of which were suitable for his analysis. Two of the candidate items were of only secondary concern, consisting of the unfired round in the MC, Manlicher Carcano, rifle, 
and a bullet fired at General Edwin Walker in April 1963. The other five evidence fragments were highly significant for the assassination scenario and were designated Group 1 exhibits by VPG. They were CE-399, the stretcher bullet, CE-567, a large lead fragment from the front seat of the Dallas limousine, CE-8 Four, three, two fragments recovered from JFK's brain at autopsy. CE-842, three fragments recovered from JBC, John B. Connolly's wrist during surgery. And CE-840, fragments from the rear floor of the Dallas limo. Sample weights and descriptive remarks were tabulated by VPG. Now what I'm going to do is to read the conclusion. And this is a multi-page report that talks about different parts of the analysis. That talks about different errors that were made. False assumptions that were made. Again, this is from a 2006 article that appeared in the Journal of Forensic Science. The fragments from the assassination scene, solely on the basis of compositional analysis, could have derived from one to five individual bullets. The compositional data are inconclusive. We therefore assert that from perspectives of standard metallurgical practice and statistical assessment of the fundamental NAA measurements, then they have in parentheses, and despite the opinion of Ron and Sturdivant that their assessment is definitive and puts the matter to rest, in parentheses, a conclusion of material evidence for only two bullets in the question JFK assassination specimens has no forensic basis. Although collateral information from the overall investigation might very well narrow the choices as standalone primary evidence, the recovered bullet fragments could be reflective of anywhere between two and five different rounds fired in Dealey Plaza that day. Only the near complete mass of CE-399, the stretcher bullet, precludes the conclusion of one to five rounds. Moreover, the fragments need not necessarily have originated from MC, Manlicker Carcano, ammunition. Indeed, the antimony compositions of the evidentiary specimens are consistent with any number of jacketed ammunitions containing unhardened lead. Right, folks? Put differently, put in my words. The scientific, excuse me, the scientific evidence simply is not there to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that only two bullets hit the presidential motorcade. It's simply not there. Anyone who tells you differently, who claims that it was proved beyond all doubt, that the bullet evidence is necessarily tied to Oswald's rifle is contradicted by this 2006 article in the Journal of Forensic Science. Right? Understand, 
This article is written oh almost 30 years after the 1978 House Assassination uh, House Select Assassination Committee. Right, these authors weren't under the same time constraints that the Warren Commission in the 60s or the House Select Assassination Committee in the 70s were under. They were able to be much more thorough in analyzing the metallurgical data and the, st and the statistical data. Right? With measured reflection and a broader time horizon, 43 years after the assassination, the authors, two PhDs of this piece and their teams concluded that there could have been up to five sources for the bullet fragments found in the presidential motorcade. Right up to five. Again, the article is entitled Proper Assessment of the JFK Assassination Bullet Lead Evidence from Metallurgical and Statistical Perspectives. I have a link in the comment section of this YouTube video. I hope you read it. It's very academically based. The point here is simply that the evidence is not there to conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that only Lee Harvey Oswald's rifle fired shots into the presidential limousine. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.